Ladies and gentlemen, boys and gals, uh, would you like that if the podcast was Jamaican? Well, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, welcome to episode 341 of the Spearhead Sundays podcast. Very excitingly, I'm happy to say that tickets for the live podcast for episode 350 are on sale right now. I have not put it on my website because I want you guys to get it first, okay? I put the link to this in the description or the comments of the Spotify or the YouTube uh, version of the podcast so you guys can get it first uh, i'm gonna leave it just there for a couple of days and then i'm gonna put it on my website to make sure that just you guys get it so they're on sale right now uh then also the uk tour is expanding very quickly but i'm in tasmania this weekend hobart and launceston this friday and saturday then i go to adelaide on june 28 ballarat Ju- june uh july 13 then warnable then shepherd and, and then in the uk i've got london birmingham manchester liverpool leeds newcastle glasgow and there might be a bristol show on the website if not now it will be in a couple of days very exciting dude it's gonna be like 10 to 15 dates it's looking like it keeps getting bigger and they're selling out manchester has like five left london we added a second show i'm just over the moon uh the live podcast of for spearhead sundays is in melbourne and it happens in a couple of weeks what's the date it's not even on my website i gotta check the date is uh the 26th of july holy shit that's in two weeks uh, so that's going to be fun. We've got a bunch of stuff planned. It's going to be me and Keelan and uh, and some stuff that you are not going to want to miss. And we'll probably have to edit it down uh, for the uh, version that we might post online. I don't know if we're going to post it. We'll see. We'll see how naughty it gets. But it's going to be a fun time. Episode 350 for Spearhead Sundays. Uh, yeah, really cool. And we've got a merch drop coming soon too. But we're working on that in the background. It's all happening. It's just me. Today is just you and me, all right? No one else, no Keelan. He came over and spent a day and a night editing stand-up clips with me uh, because uh, we just had heaps to do. So I enlisted him, and today it's just you and me. And I thought I would just do like a bit of a check-in, a bit of a one-on-one. How are you going? We're halfway through the year, all right? I know that I had a pretty fucking crazy start of the year, becoming healthy, recovering, starting again. Had a big opportunity come up, had to disappear for a little bit. I think that's going to start happening at some point. I Fuck, I'm dying to talk about it, but you'll see. I've talked about it at live shows, violating a lot of... Look, okay, doesn't matter. <laughs> if you know, you know. And even if you think you know, you haven't really been told exactly. You'll see. But yeah, it's... Uh, I don't know. It's, it's a bit of, a, it's a, bit of a, a check-in, all right? We're halfway through the year, and I wanted to see how you're going. I'm going, I'm going pretty good. I'm getting back into the swing of things. I feel like I feel like when I became healthy, it was such a shock to my system. And I was like, oh my God, I, I feel amazing. Now I can just start doing it. And then and then what happened was instead of doing it, I feel like I've spent and this is good. This is a bit more realistic, a bit more managed. I feel like the first six months of this year has been undoing the damage of of me being ill for years. You know? Instead of just starting and fucking launching i've just been like oh shit i can't do that until i fix this because i've been doing it in a broken way for years or i've been not doing it for years you know like just last week we fixed the merch shipping situation there's been people who who haven't been getting merch for fucking months which is really bad you know we just fulfilled all those patreon rewards that people have been owed for ages and that's just because you know, the way we d- we were doing it was fucked and then no one was doing it. And then I'm like, all right, we need to fix this now. And then the way we used to do it just it wasn't working anymore. So we had to come up with a new system and set that up and get that going and then fucking ship it all out. But it is shipped out. And then, you know, it's like all the touring. It's like, oh, man, who is going to be booking my shows? Where do I even want to go? So I've been working with a new guy. He's been killing it. But it took us months to get to this point, and now he's locking in shows in countries neither of us have been to. Nailing it. But it took us basically six months to get there. And then and then for me, I, I feel like I've just gotten a handle on, you know, actually creating stuff and releasing it regularly. The podcast was the one thing I was like, no matter what else happens, I'm going to do the podcast and I'm going to do the Patreon thing. And that's been happening. 
and I figured out how to do that without missing any weeks for six months, which is, I think it's got to be the longest hot streak. I think someone did the math and it's like by far the longest hot streak. But you know, the YouTube isn't really going and the stand-up clips have been start, stop. Uh, but that's mainly because I've just been like figuring out how to do it all again. Because, you know, when I stopped, uh, I had two people employed. Well, I kind of employed like between fucking three to five people on and off, short term, part time. And then I come back and I am healthy, which is amazing, but it is just me. And it's like, holy shit, what can I actually do? And I've kind of figured out what I can do without setting myself crazy. And um, yeah, I, I feel ultimately I feel I feel good. And I feel like, yeah, the first six months has really just been putting out fires that have been burning for years. <laughs> you know? Like, oh, fuck. Who left the oven on for four years? The house is burnt down. I got to build a new house. That's basically what I feel like I've been doing. And then, you know, it's like, oh my God, I'm finally making some money. Oh, I got I to gotta spend it on debt. This sucks. How am I making money? I'm still fucking poor. Oh, boo. You know? Do a show, sell it out. Fuck yeah, here comes some money. Oh, where did it go? <laughs> oh, that's right, because I didn't make any for fucking four years, so now i got to pay the piper. But I'm, again, I'm not complaining. It's just like I'm, I'm talking about how, you know, sometimes when, when things fall apart, when you get into, into a position where you, where you can start again, you don't get to start from... It's not, you know, it's like a, a, a part of me was like, oh man, now that I'm well, everything is going to go back to where things were in like 2019 on career wise, where like, or the YouTube was crushing it and, or maybe more like 2020, but I, I don't know, it, but everything's fucking changed. You know what I mean? And in some ways things are so much better in other ways they're they're not as good as they could be like the youtube is not going great i would love that to be better but also i haven't been fucking uploading so of course that's where it is um but also i'm crushing it on fucking instagram <laughs> and the podcast is the biggest that it's ever been and so is the patreon i sold the most amount of tickets that i've ever sold in perth uh, and I'm doing fucking UK shows. So it's like, I don't know. I feel like... I guess, you know what it is? It's like, now that things are spinning again, like there's a little part of me that's like, oh, fuck, I'm, I'm still... I'm still here in this place when really what I want is to have not had to stop for years. You know what I mean? It's like, oh, finally, I can start again. Oh, shit, I'm still where I am a couple years ago. And I want to have progressed. But obviously, I haven't. But also, I have. Because I have all the shit that I had years ago. But I'm, I also have a healthy body. And that's something I've never had in my life. Uh, and I have the ability to, like, create without going on fucking insane two, three-month burnout tangents where I just fucking go, 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 and then stop. So, hang on, I gotta turn the heater off, I'm fucking cooking. For example, I don't know if you can hear me, but I'm gonna pretend that you can. Uh, I went to the gym, did a bunch of stuff, it was someone's birthday, had a whole birthday thing, and now it's night time, and I'm like, oh, I've got enough energy to do, the, to do the podcast. If that happened, like, fucking eight months ago, I'd be like, alright, cool, I'll take six weeks off. <laughs> So it's, I'm trying, what I'm trying to do is I'm trying to uh, balance the frustration of the, the, um, I'm trying to balance the frustration of how much my illness held me back with the gratitude that I am well at all and that I'm now able to do shit. I think that's, that's where I'm, where I'm at at the moment. I'm trying to be very grateful for what I have now without 
being resentful that I had to go through any of this shit at all. That's where I'm at. Because it's like, if I had to choose, if I had the ability to choose, which none of us do, I would never choose that for myself. But now that I have gone through it, I can recognize that all this fucking resilience that I got from it and all these like skills and all of these um, uh, all of this perspective that it's given me, I never would you would never be able to achieve by, I don't know, fucking thinking about it. You know, you can't you can't there's starving people in Africa your way into enjoying a meal more than you already are, really. You know what I mean? Like, you can be like, oh, yeah. But you can't properly fucking appreciate it until you've been that starving kid in Africa. That's what I'm saying, is that, is that I'm, a, I'm, a, I'm, a, I'm an impoverished Sudanese nine-year-old boy, and you should support me on World Vision. But yeah, we're, we're six months through the year, and I feel like <laughs> I am finally on top of pretty much everything and there's it feels like there's no more fires to put out because before it was like they, they were just fucking everywhere and then I started and then and then I, I yeah I feel like I started the race and you know what it was I was at the I was at the I was at the starting line of a race right and I had this huge fucking anvil chained to my leg that was my illness and I was like all I need to do is cut that fucker off and I'll be able to sprint and then I finally after years I got someone else to drill through it like they did my skull and finally detached this anvil of sickness from myself and I'm like let's fucking go and I start sprinting and then I get yanked back and I look and I've moved forward a little bit but dragging behind me are six other much smaller anvils. <laughs> I'm like, fuck! I gotta get these things off my fucking leg too! I didn't even know they were there because of the, the big fucking anvil in front of them. You know, big problem make little problem. You get rid of big problem doesn't necessarily mean that there are no problems. But like doing this... This tour that I'm doing, I mean, that's another thing. Sometimes I'm like, oh, I'm not getting as many YouTube views as I want. And they're like, kind of, you fucking insane? Like, I am the biggest that I've ever been. I'm getting crazy views on, like, Reels and TikTok, which, you know, no one's, no one's crushing it on YouTube. Right now, everyone's smashing on the short platforms. And I'm like, dude. You're doing the biggest tour that you've ever done. I'm going to go to the UK and I'm selling out shows. And I'm like, oh, I wish my YouTube videos were getting more views. I wish I could afford to have an editor. And it's like, dude, relax, chill out. Things aren't going to fucking go back completely to whatever you think normal is in, you know, a month. Because you fucking... You know, I, I think, like, I only got my braces off a couple months ago. You know, I only just finished this whole thing, and I still haven't paid for the braces. <laughs> oh, hang on. Keelan's texting me now. I am recording right now. Um. Anyway. So, that's kind of... What's happening with me is like, I'm like trying to just be happy that I can do this at all. Cause this is, you know, it's like, obviously this is the longest hot streak of the podcast, but like in, in my life, this is the longest hot streak of like fucking waking up every day and feeling all right and being like, Oh, what should I make today? So I don't, so like, I don't, I shouldn't be looking at my shit and be like, oh, I wish I was, I wish I was making fucking heaps of money from YouTube sponsorships like I used to. It's like, brother, I just got on a, on a fucking plane home from Queensland to sold out shows. 
in every fucking city that I did that wasn't Sunshine Coast, which was only 40 people, but it was still delightful. <laughs> and let's be real, brother, you've never sold out a show in Sunshine Coast. So, you know, in fact, I think the last time I did a show in Sunshine Coast, it was only about 35 people. So in, in real life, you're fucking killing it too. <laughs> and also, Justin Ryan came to the Sunshine Coast show, so that's fucking awesome. Yeah, I'm trying to, it's like, yeah. I think also what's what's hard for me is is that so much of this fucking awfulness and this this pain and sickness and all this kind of bullshit that I went through happened in this house. So sometimes when I go away, I'm like, oh man, I, f I feel fucking unbelievable. But of course I feel unbelievable. I'm in a fucking hotel and I'm doing shows every night, you know? Something about getting on a plane, you go, oh, I don't have any problems. I I just, I, I was on a plane for two hours. I got off and now there's no problems. Yeah, they are. They're waiting for you back at home. And also most of them came with you, not in your luggage, in your soul. So I, th so I think like, um, it's now that all of like the, the huge, glaringly obvious emergency problems are gone. It's like, ah, fuck. Now I got to deal with their friends. <laughs> it's like, it's like you had a party in your house and someone showed up uninvited and you're like, ah, oh, who's this cunt? He starts fucking up the house. He starts smashing things. And he he brought he brought six friends with him, and they're not they're not like smashing plates like like the one guy who brought six friends he goes straight in your kitchen and starts smashing plates and you're like what are you doing? No, not my charcuterie board! Don't smash that! Oh, those are my good plates. I was gonna use that fine china for my wedding. You fucking stop smashing those things. And all you're thinking about is getting this guy who's smashing shit out of your fucking house because he's ruining the party. You're like, oh, get this out of here. And that's your big emergency problem. And then it takes you months to get him out of the house because he just won't leave. And you're trying your best. And every time you try something new, it fucks you up a little bit. And then one day, one final triumphant day, you kick him out of your house and he never comes back. And you sit down and you go, oh my God, now that that guy's out of my house, my life is going to be fucking perfect. Finally, my house is going to be good. Oh, I can go back to how things were before that guy showed up. And then you look around your house and his six friends are still there. You didn't notice them before because they weren't smashing anything. All right. But that guy over there has got his feet on the furniture and you're like, can, can that please, that's... I mean, that's not as bad as smashing the plates, but can you please not put that the, your dirty feet on the furniture? And then there's another guy in there that you didn't notice it at the time because, again, the mate that invited him was running around the house pulling, pulling the cutlery drawer out of your fucking kitchen and throwing it. So you were much more concerned with that chaos. And then you look over here. And you see that this guy won't stop shaving and leaving his fucking pubes in the sink. You're like, oh, well, first of all, who even shaves their balls in a sink? Do it in the shower. Second of all, if, even if that was your beard hair, that'd be gross. But it's your fucking ball hair. That's worse. He's not even using a Manscaped razor. And then there's four other blokes in your house that are doing sim similarly disrespectful but not necessarily completely fucked things and you're like oh i didn't even notice that this was going on because i had this huge issue in my life and i feel like that's where i'm at where, where like i got rid of the huge problem which was my illness and then i'm like oh what do you mean when you don't work for years your youtube channel suffers now i gotta now I got to build back up again. I don't want to build back up again. I just want to 
continue on as if I were uploading for four years in a row. I would like to, I would like to ignore reality and just fucking go back to how it was. It's not how, you know, it's not how it works. Sometimes when you solve a huge problem, much smaller issues reveal themselves. Well, not that, not reveal themselves, but become visible. And it's not like they were never there. It's like they were always there, but you couldn't even pay attention to them. They were just like, oh, whatever. You know, like if there's a fire in your kitchen, you're not going to do the dishes. But when the fire is contained, you might be like, oh, thank God my house isn't going to burn down. Oh, fuck, I got to do the dishes. Oh, I don't want to do the dishes. And then you notice the fire took out your dishwasher. Oh, now I got to do them by hand myself. You know, that's like, oh, I got to build my YouTube channel back up and I got to do it with no editors. That's where I'm at. I'm trying to pick my, because the number one for me is like, all I really care about creatively wise is I want to put on the best show possible. I want to be the best stand-up comedian I can possibly be. And I don't want to miss a single episode of this podcast. Um, and then it's like, I got to do stand-up clips. I got to fucking do short videos. I got to do real talk. I got to do my YouTube channel. I was doing vlogging. I was really enjoying that. I'm still filming vlogs, but I don't, I can't find the, the time to edit them. Oh fuck. I'm doing the podcast really well, but if I really want to grow it, I should be doing podcast clips and Maybe Spearhead Sunday should have its own social media and it, I should be posting clips there and some clips on Lewis Spears. And, 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 and um, well, maybe I should just drop all of that and just focus on YouTube because YouTube actually makes money. But then if I don't do the short clips, I won't sell tickets and tickets are, you know, that's how I'm paying my mortgage. And it's like, I'm juggling a lot of jobs. And it's like, oh, fuck, I haven't sent out merch for weeks. Shit. So... Yeah, I, I think that's 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 what's happening is like, oh, I'm in this really amazing, beautiful space where I'm finally healthy uh, and uh, I'm fuck, I'm very handsome. I think that's what I'm getting to is is that is that I'm very handsome. And that's that's great. I got nice teeth. You know that people definitely treat me way different strangers people i know fine completely normal all right it's like it never happened strangers <laughs> oh, fuck it's a i live in a different a different reality i have pretty privilege now and it's it's fucking crazy now i don't know if i would have pretty privilege if i was like 511 with this head but being 6 foot 8 with this head i've got it in spades brother and life's good over here. And that's something that we can be grateful for. But something that still is annoying is that I have an idea for a YouTube video. I film it and then I'm like, all right, where the fuck am I going to find eight hours to edit this motherfucker? <laughs> you know, did a great video the other day, but Keelan edited the whole thing. So I think that's where I'm at, where it's like, I, I need money to pay an editor, but I can't make money to pay an editor unless I like crush the YouTube thing and get some brand deals, but I can't crush the YouTube thing and get some brand deals if I'm doing all of this other shit, unless I have an editor. So it's like, fuck. I'm trying to figure shit out. I'm hoping that this, this I'll come home from the UK tour with some money and then I'll be able to fund it for a few months and then it will work. But then, you know, that's a, that's a big I hope, right? Oh, I really hope I come home from my first ever 15-date international tour with money. <laughs> that doesn't happen, my guy. <laughs> Like, if I pay for flights and accommodation and come home with 10 bucks, unbelievable dub. <laughs> you know? Like, if I come home with $10, free UK holiday. Let's go. People save for a year for that shit. I'll get to do it and I'll leave with $10? That's like five pound, isn't it? So, yeah, I don't know. And then, and then it's just also like the whole... 
mental health aspect of it, of like, men living in hell and being really sick doesn't go away when you remove the problem. Like, it alleviates it so much, but then it's like, ah, fuck, I'm not there anymore. So I, so I can move on, but shit, that can be hard as well. But I'm doing good, you know. I'm I'm doing good, and I and and most days are good days, and I'm I'm very happy, and I'm I'm so fucking grateful, and I'm so lucky to have been able to go through all of that, and then just like get cured. No one who's sick just gets cured. That never happens. That's reserved for people who like break an arm. You know. No one who has a, a fucking illness that they, they live with every single day ever gets a cure. Cancer, it's a maybe, you know? And, and even when it goes away, might come back. This will never, ever happen again to me unless I become obese. And, I mean, that's impossible for me. <laughs> you know, it might come back when I'm like 70 or 80, and that's normal for most 70, 80 year olds is sleep apnea. I'll it'll fucking fixed. How lucky am I? And you know what my side effect is? I look handsome. And you know what my job is? Entertainment. And how much, you know that I can just post a photo of myself on Instagram now and it'll get likes. <laughs> you know that I've never been able to do that before ever. Bro, posting a photo of me and it'll get likes. That's unheard of. Never in my life did I think I'd be able to just be like, oh, I don't have anything to post. I've got no short clips. I didn't have time to edit them. Oh, that's all right. I spent 40 grand on a new face. Post that, motherfucker. Get some likes. I haven't been searched when I leave a store once since the surgery. Once. Because I no longer look like a strung out crackhead who hasn't slept for four years. <laughs> With bad teeth, bags under his eyes, underweight, looking half deceased. So there's yeah, there's lot there's lots and lots to be grateful for, and there's there's lots of perspective that I have because I can see how bad life can be. Um but, you know, that shit leaves its mark on you. Even when all the problems go away, it, it, leaves, a, it leaves a mark. And I'm trying to, uh, I'm trying to, it, I mean, it, you know, it's like a scar. Scars fade. They, they never, a lot of scars never go away, but they fade. And I'm trying to let it, I'm trying to let it fade. And I think, uh, I mean, I, at some point I'll talk about this. I can't talk about it now because it's very, very private, but you know, right as my surgery was happening, something fucking absolutely horrific happened to someone that I love very, very dearly. And that was really, really horrible. And it and selfishly came at the worst time for me, <laughs> the real victim. <laughs> like, oh, couldn't that have happened a fucking six months after I got better? It was one of those things where it's like, again, the fire in the kitchen analogy, all right? If your house is on fire and then someone and then and then some something horrible happens to someone you love, it's like, all right, cool, but my house is on fire, I gotta put this out. So I can't even begin to process that. That's kind of what happens. So it's like, I'm about to go into surgery, I get a call, holy fuck, I can't even think about that. I gotta put it in a box over there because I'm about to get decapitated. So it was like, you know, essentially the same time. And then I get I, the surgery and then I get better and then and it was going to stop. I'm like, oh my God, I'm well. Holy fuck. I got to open this box. And that fucked me up heaps. And that's something I'm still wrestling with and something that I will talk about, but it's, it's, uh, it's not my decision. 
on if I can talk about it publicly and if I can talk about it public, what I can even say. But I am okay. And all of these all of these things that can uh sorry, this episode isn't very funny, is it? This ep- sorry, this episode isn't isn't very funny. I've got some notes written here and and uh and they're quite funny. But in, but instead I got I got I got talking about how my year has been going and it's gotten very deep and serious. Is this what is this what you want? I have I I have here that I went to a comic convention and I saw a J-pop star perform to 30 people. That's fucking that's good, but we might have to save it for next episode because because we're in this place now. But I think this is good. And this has always been what the podcast is. It's just like I've I've always been like for better or worse, kind of exceedingly obvious about where I'm going and what I'm trying to do. I think another thing that I've that I've been uh, that's frustrating to me, and it's also spoiled baby shit again, because like basically in 2019, I was talking to immigration lawyers to move to America. COVID illness, and here we are. COVID happened, got really sick, needed surgeries, COVID delayed surgeries for two years, got surgeries, that took two years. Now I just finished, I got my braces off. Fuck, I have to still be in, you know, I was like, I was feeling uh, like quite frustrated with uh, living in Australia just because there's not the population to sustain um comedy to a level where you can get like you can become unbelievable I, I talk about this experience all the time when i went around with when i went around with andrew schultz uh where he took me around new york and i followed him for a day a night and he did four club spots 15 minutes each went to club one did 15 minutes and he had a new bit and it kind of worked it kind of didn't jumped in a cab go to club two same 15 minutes it worked a lot better but it still wasn't really there uh, jump in a cab, go to a th- go to a third club. He does fifteen minutes. The, the bit is now working. It's not finished, but it's working. No dead spots. Jump in a cab, go back to the original club where he performed, where they have their second night, second show of the night. Brand new audience, same club, fifteen minutes, and it and it crushes. And it's not finished, but it's so far ahead of where it was when he started. And I just ran around with, with him like that. I was like, oh my god, this cunt got an hour of stage time to audiences that had paid to be there that were not his fans. He got paid to do those gigs. That for me was like, if you don't count Lewis Spears shows, fucking an hour of stage time, that's like a month of gigs for me. Unpaid open mics in front of 30 people maybe who aren't very invested in comedy and they're like, oh yeah, I I would rather talk to my friend. Because because we don't have clubs like that. We got we got two in this city, and we got one in Perth. We had two in Adelaide. One just shut down. We don't have the population to sustain it. And and that then there's a skill ceiling in Australia. Because imagine if you could only go to the gym for five minutes a day, maybe fifteen minutes a day. And every comedian I saw in New York was the best comedian I had ever seen. And I had not heard of any of them. They just had stage time. And they were surrounded by people that were even better than they were. And I was like, oh, this is where I need to be. I need to be in the States. I need to be in a country that has the population to sustain uh, a career. Not just a career in comedy. Like It's not about making money. It's about actually doing it all the time. Um, and that's how I was feeling in 2019, right? And then I had to go through all of this shit and now I'm here and I'm like, oh, I still feel that frustration. I like, I want to, I want to progress. I think that's the thing where it's like, fuck, I, I had to go through all of that shit just to kind of be where I was in, or to be, I've, I've moved much further ahead of my career, but I'm doing the same shit of like, man. 
I really want to be performing like every fucking night and doing clubs and being in a place where you can get paid to do comedy. Like I don't, you don't get paid to do comedy in Australia. You can do your own shows. That's awesome. And you get paid by charging t tickets, charging your fans for tickets, but there's not, you can't get paid to do comedy here unless you get on a cruise ship or you headline your local club every so often. And you almost certainly can't pay rent off doing that without the cruises. <laughs> so it's like, I feel like in Australia, we have, we're doing an impression of a comedy scene, a comedy, not a comedy scene. We're doing an impression of a comedy industry. And anyone that has any talent leaves if they want to make it. I mean, I look at what, say what you like. I look at what Hannah Gadsby has done and I'm inspired. That's so fucking cool. Uh, Jim Jeffries. Um, yeah, you just, you got to leave. You got to, you got to get out of here because we don't have the population to sustain anything that isn't mining. <laughs> that's not our population. That's because we have the right rocks in our dirt. So I, so I think, yeah, it's like, but then I'm like, are you fucking joking, dude? Like what I think about when I was 12 and I just, all I, all I wanted to do was be a fucking comedian. That's all I wanted to do with my life. And I would tell everyone I would, I, if I was 12, I would look at me and I would go, I would cry. It's like, Oh my God. We, I can't believe that I get to do that. We did it. You know, and making a living off anything creative or any kind of dream to any scale. Like to be able to do what you love and not have a fucking nine to five. Like I remember how fucking soul crushed and sad I was when I had a job. When I knew that I had to be doing this. And even if I even if I went back to fucking 2014 and I got to look at me now like, holy shit. You bought a house with dick jokes? <laughs> That's crazy. So yeah, it's like I'm I'm ba I'm trying to I'm balancing appreciation with frustration that I haven't been able to progress because of all the shit that I had to go through. I suppose. But you know, I have, I, I have this thing and it, it's a huge reason why I've been so successful, but it's also can be a big problem. I have this, this thing where I often feel like, and I don't know if it's common, but I often feel like, um, and I've only really worked this out like very recently. Like I feel like if I'm not progressing, I'm going backwards that's how I feel sometimes. And that's wrong because progressing is moving forwards and, you know, the, the chart can go, it's like, a, it's like a, the graph can go up or it can just flatline or it can go down, right? And, and flatlining is there's no regression. So if you make it up here and then you just continue onwards, that's great. All right. It's not only great if you fucking consistently are, are only consistently going up. If you're maintaining success, that's unbelievable. So many people attain success and then fucking lose it all. But I, I feel, and it's a huge reason why I've been so successful again, and it's because I'm always trying to fucking keep going and keep going and keep going, progressing and progressing and progressing. But sometimes I can feel like, oh, fuck, I haven't moved forward, so I must be going backwards. Which, like, if I take a step back and I look objectively at my career and what's going on, like, I'm fucking, I'm going, I'm crushing it. I'm going great. I've taken some steps back in other areas and I've lost my team and that's added a lot of stress onto me and a lot of means I have to choose what things I'm going to not do a lot. And that can be stressful because I feel like I'm letting down people who like the YouTube or I'm letting people down who like the stand-up clips or I'm letting people down who like the podcast or, you know. Um, but that doesn't mean I'm moving backwards. 
that means I'm maintaining it. And, uh, and you know, if again, if I take another step backwards, I am moving forwards. It's just a little bit slower. And that's because, you know, I've just started moving again. And when you start moving from zero, you don't start with a sprint. It's just a little walk. And I'm slowly picking up speed. So, yeah, I don't know. That's That's kind of where I'm at. But, you know, that's fine. Six months through the year, I think I've done a lot. I'm all, I'm oh, kind of almost finished with an Australia tour, aren't I? And it's been it's been like some of the best shows I've ever done. Like for real, this show that I'm doing is I think it's the best show that I've ever done. Like and especially after the last two weekends, like that New South Wales and Queensland leg. Fuck, I was on fire. You know, had Keelan and, and uh, Mitch, who who does the touring, we were editing stand-up clips. We were pissing ourselves at some of the stand-up clips that we have. Um, and I get to do a UK tour, a country I've never been to, and I've already sold out some shows. So, like, yeah, I'm trying to – I'm just trying to be a appreciative. I think it's like, yeah, it's just that thing of, like, you go through stuff and you – you know, you you carry scars, and I'm trying to I'm trying to let my scars fade, but they're still there. You know what it is? It's like, uh, you know, Harry Potter. Every time he's near Voldemort, he, ah, that's that's all I do. Every now and then, I just go, ah, that reminds me of when this used to happen. Ow, fuck. And then you and then you get put back in that space and you gotta look around and be like, nah, that, that problem is actually not here anymore. You're actually you've actually moved past that. Like in reality, that's not happening anymore. The only place that problem appears to be happening is is in in you and your nervous system and everything, because you know, you're reminded, fuck, that thing happened. And that's that's fine. That's what it is. That's what happens when a bad thing happens and you survive it. It, um, it adds to you. It doesn't just, it doesn't destroy you. It just adds something, you know, the, all this, all this shit that, that happened that I went through that I triumphed over. It's just, uh, it's just deepened my soul is how I kind of view it. It's like, it hasn't changed me. It hasn't destroyed me. It's just, it's just added a richness to my soul and to who I am. And it has enabled me massively to when someone else goes through something awful in my life, I actually can communicate with them and I can talk to them like a fucking wise person who's been through similar and often worse. And I can go, I actually know what you're feeling. <laughs> and that's a really powerful thing because, I mean, I know, and I'm sure everyone has this experience, I'm sure you have, where something horrible happens to you and you go, fuck. And then you tell someone and they go, oh, and it scares them and they don't know what to do. They can't help you and you feel bad because you see that you've just kind of freaked them out and it's weird and it's awkward and they don't know what to do. And then it's like you've kind of fucked up their mood and you've made yourself feel worse because they didn't know what to do with that. Whereas... When something happens to you, you go, ah, oh, fuck. And you share it with someone and they can actually accept that and take that, understand and help you a little bit with something with, with their wisdom that can actually make both of you feel heaps better. And that's something that I've, uh, been able to do with other people, you know, and I only realized that, uh, was, uh, you know, when this, when this awful thing happened to someone that I loved 
I didn't, I didn't fucking know anyone that could even remotely relate. And I told someone and it fucking just was not good. Didn't help anyone, ruined their day, made me feel worse. Uh, and then I found someone that I could tell that I knew had experienced the same. And, and all I could say was, I'm so fucking sorry that you can help me with this. This feels so horrible. And I felt so much empathy for them because I knew that they had experienced it too. And I was like, holy shit. I couldn't even imagine this beforehand. And now I'm sharing it with you because I know that you've been through it. And they helped me a lot. And that was beautiful. And and you know what? It's happened to someone else in my life since. And they've come to me. And I've been able to do that for someone else. And that's a fucking horrible thing that I had to experience uh, and go through. And I would never, ever choose it again. If I had the decision, I would never choose to go through it, but I have. And what I can take from it is a, like a, a crazy resilience and an ability to help other people through that, which is a super unique skill that I hope to God none of you have to acquire. <laughs> but if... You can. So I'm just, so yeah, I, I think uh, I'm doing really well. I'm doing really good and I am happy. Um, you know, I'm alive. Not everyone gets to be alive and that's so fucking beautiful and amazing and just this week I booked a, a one-way flight to London because I don't know when my UK tour is going to end what the fuck you know we're looking at Dublin and Belfast shows in Ireland if we can lock those in it'll be like 13 15 dates three countries None of which I've ever been to before. I'm I might be gone for like five weeks just doing comedy. And that's so like even just like eight or nine months ago, I couldn't even imagine doing that. I I wouldn't even be able to think of whether or not that would be possible. And that's something to be grateful for. And that's like, if you're, if you're going through it, man, you get on the other side of this thing, you, you will feel so good and it will change you, but it, but it won't change you for the worse. It will just add to your character, to your soul. Uh, and yeah. It will, in, it will deepen your soul and enrich you in ways that nothing else can. And you wouldn't choose to go through it again, but you have and you can decide to um, let it be something that strengthens you. That's where I'm, that's where I am. Um, and I haven't been fucking swimming. I felt I I had, I got this big opportunity and the, and I couldn't swim for like a month. And then I just completely fell out of the fucking habit. And then I stopped paying for my gym membership. And then they kept sending me fucking texts about how I had to pay for it. And then I changed my debit card and then, and then I was like, ah, oh, fuck it. I'll think about it later. And then, and then it's been four months and I've only swam like fucking 25 times, but I'm going to turn it around. I'm going to swim a hundred times this year. I'm getting in the pool tomorrow morning. I'm going to, I'm going to get wet. And episode 350 is going to be live. It's in two weeks. The live episode, not the, it won't be released for nine weeks, but, but we're recording it 
in two weeks in Melbourne and I want to see you there. And I'm going to be fucking swimming and I'm going to be wet as. Not at the show, just tomorrow morning when I'm in the pool. And when I get out of the pool, I'm probably going to dry off. But you know what? I might post an Instagram story of me at the pool. And instead of being met with derision and ridicule, I might actually get a few likes and fire emojis. Because, because that's the type of chin that I have. Isn't that fucking crazy that, that because I have a new face, I can post a shirtless photo? You know, what's that meme where like the, the, an ugly guy is hitting on a woman and it says creepy and then a hot guy hits on a woman and it says fine on a workplace harassment. Okay. That's real. Unfortunately, that's real. And that's another thing to be grateful for. I get to be an attractive person who also has a personality and a sense of humor. Those don't really exist. <laughs> you know? So yeah, I so that's I don't know. It's that's what that's my update. I feel like uh what I have what I have missed with this podcast is like having these little one-on-one chats where I kind of talk about what's actually happening because that's always been such a huge part of Spearhead Sundays is just like, hey man, here's my impossible dream. And uh I I really want to get back to that because 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 I intentionally put that part of me away while I was sick and while well, lockdowns were happening because it was too hurtful to start up and stop again because every time I would start up running I would get my hope back and my drive back and my vision for the future back and then it would get cut and I would have to put it away and then eventually I had, I was like I remember I was like maybe had a big fucking cry and a breakdown it was like right before I moved to Tassie and I was like I need to put this this away this hope away for now because it's actually much more hurtful and i and i i think i only just took it out of its box again like three years later now that i am well and i'm sure that i'm not gonna go backwards because you know there's like the whole thing of like oh when i get this surgery i'll be all right but it's like am i i don't know what does all right mean i've never been well how sick am i am i even does it even really the the sleep apnea holding me back or am i just like really depressed or what's going on but i you know I I remember, dude. I was in um in my hotel in Brisbane after I did the the Brisbane show at the comedy club, sold out two hundred people. Incredible show. After I did a fucking phenomenal show in Gold Coast the night before, that I actually did all. I did an hour fifty five. I almost did two hours. Actually, too long. <laughs> but I was just on, I was just on one. And I was crushing and the crowd work was hot and I just kept going. And then, and then I just looked out at the crowd and everyone, everyone was loving it, but I just saw how exhausted everyone was. And I was like, all right, I need to fucking get out of here. I need to end this. Um, but it was such an amazing show. And then I did Sunshine Coast and, and, and it was small, but it was really good. And I came back and, uh, and, I, and I was listening to Missy Higgins uh, steer her song. And I listened to the lyrics and dude, I don't know, just for me, it just felt like, uh, there's something like now that you know that you're, that you're in control, you can steer and it really just fucking, so hold this feeling like a newborn. And it, I don't know, I just, I was listening to it. I was listening to the lyrics and I was like, oh, this just feels like, uh, letting go of my, all the shit that I went through and taking the reins back and being able to actually drive my life again and steer and, and, uh, and be able to fail and be like, that was because of me and not, and ex like un not a fucking plague or not an illness that it's out of my control. But I actually, I actually failed here because I, sh I should have done that when I did this and I can learn from that and grow instead of just being like, oh, well, that didn't work. What can I learn? Oh, nothing. It wasn't my fault at all. I'm just sick. 
And similarly now, it's like, oh man, when I have a win, I can be like, that's because I did this. I did well. I can build upon this. It's not going to fall apart. And I just, man, I just had a, a huge fucking cry on my balcony. The sun was setting. I'm listening to Missy Higgins. I had this, I had this beautiful steak dinner after the show because I just realized, holy shit, I can eat steak. I had not eaten steak for two years because I couldn't eat steak with the braces. And I had this fucking steak dinner. I went out to my hotel by myself and I just had a listen to Miss Higgins packing my suitcase and had a huge cry going, fuck, I'm actually being a comedian and I'm not sick anymore. And I might get to keep some of this money. I'm slowly pulling myself out of the debt that I got into. And I've got shows in countries I've never been to. And I, I'm going to do comedy clubs and I'm going to be a comedian. And I had this huge opportunity that will help me get a visa to the States. And maybe I'll actually fucking get to move to New York. Like I've been dreaming of for years and years and years. So, yeah, I just, it's, I'm, you know, I'm, I am a whole person. There are lots of good things. There are some bad things and there are some wounds. But I am choosing to focus on the good things and honor the bad things when they happen, but not hold on to them and I'm trying to let my wounds heal and not fester. And that's that's a that's a process because I'm a I'm a human that's been through a lot of shit. And that's the that's the episode. That's our little check-in halfway through the year. And I'm not swimming enough, and I'm gonna do that because I love swimming. And I want to do 100 swims this year. So I'm going to keep you guys updated with that. And uh, yeah, thank you very much for listening. That's my little check-in. Next episode will be a bit funnier. We'll have, some, we'll have some laughs. And I can't wait to see you at episode 350, which is in two weeks. Uh, the links to that is in the description and the comments on the YouTube. Uh, but in a couple of days, it's going to be on my website. So make sure you grab them because I want you guys to have them before anyone else. Uh, Hobart and Launceston, grab your tickets. I'll see you Friday and Saturday. And uh, then I got the Adelaide and uh, what else do I have? I've got Ballarat, Warnable, Shepparton. And that's it for Australia, man. Then we're doing London, Birmingham, Manchester, Liverpool, Leeds, Newcastle, Glasgow and Bristol. Uh, Bristol will be on the website when it is on the website. I'll post about it this week. And hopefully we'll get to Ireland. We're working on that now. And yeah. I'm Lewis Spears. I'll talk next Sunday and uh, on Patreon right now. I hope you have a shit one. Bye.